Agora TV. The world is thinking. Now, of course, all that we have in the archaeological record is bones, but it does give us some indication of the amount of muscle, of the amount of mechanical load that was placed on, uh, on that bone. And just to give you an amusing confirmation that that really is true and that I'm not making it up, there's a funny little diagram down there that actually looks like uh, some kind of ecstasy tab from a rave or something, but it's not. That's actually a demonstration, uh, it's a graphic from an article which was done comparing tennis players, in this case female tennis players. That's the cross section of the humerus of, on the closest to me is the humerus of a non-tennis playing adolescent female. And further over to the left, I'm getting very confused with the directions here. Further over is that of Amelie Maresmo, uh, or of somebody very, very like her. She's used, we'll, we'll see further on that she's actually used in this study. And the blue bit, of course, is just the natural bone, the natural cortical cross-section of the non-tennis playing adolescent female. Whereas uh, the green bit is how much thicker Amelie Maresmo's uh, in this case I guess it's her right humerus is because of all the, the mechanical load that she's placed on it through hitting over all those years. And uh, it's absolutely no disrespect to the woman who's a very fine tennis player to say that she actually has a humerus which is probably close to approaching the dimensions of that of Homo erectus. And that's a very important point which we'll get into a little bit later. So because we do have the upper arm bones of the Neanderthal female who was Lafarae's two as I say, I made a calculation of exactly how big her biceps muscle was likely to be. Now, I really had to fudge a few things here because the bicep is actually not the strongest muscle in, uh, in arm wrestling, as any professional will tell you, but that wouldn't help us because we'll see that she has even better muscles where it really does count. But I used the, the biceps as a, uh, as a proxy. Now, the amount of force that a human muscle puts out in cross-sectional area is the same between men and women. It's no different. It's simply that uh, men have more muscle than what women do. So I estimated, I compared her cortical area of her bone to that of a, an average modern male, and hers is considerably bigger. So it's very likely that even in just the, her natural state, uh, she had at least 10% more muscle than what any of us here probably has. Uh, of course, uh, Alexei Vavoda uh, trains very severely, so he's built up an enormous amount of muscle. So I didn't think it was fair to send her into combat with him. Uh, without giving her some training as well. So I researched exactly how much, uh, how much women can develop muscle uh, in response to weight training. It's considerable. It's not quite as much as men, but it's very considerable, around 34%. And the long and short of it is, is that when she was given the same training re regime, she developed muscles that were nearly as big as his and could put out about 94% of the force that his could. So you might ask, why did I say that she would win? Well, for a very good reason. If you look at one thing you can see about the illustration there is that she has very much shorter limbs. If you look at her arm, her upper arm is considerably shorter than Alexei's is, but even more pronounced is her lower arm. It's very, very short. Now there are a couple of explanations of this. One of them has to do with temperature, because Neanderthals uh, tended to live in colder areas, but not always. But probably the most compelling one is, is that it's a strength adaptation. Because with muscles uh, such as the biceps, it's a third class lever. Now we all know that usually making a lever longer makes it easier to put out more force and to move more. In the case of a third class lever, that's not true. The shorter the lever is, the stronger you are. And that is very probably why Neanderthals had such very short uh, lower leg bones and lower arm bones. Because they lived uh, extremely robust lives, very, very many of the Neanderthal skeletons that we find have fractures in them probably from hunting big animals and, and having a very generally violent life. So um, anybody will tell you in the World Arm Wrestling Championship, the, the guys that win are the guys with the short arms because of that strength ratio thing. Uh, but, so that took her to around about 99% of his strength when I calculated that advantage. But she had two final tricks up her sleeve and they were that Neanderthal arms rotated very differently to ours are. Their muscles attached in different spots, which gave them very, very profound strength in uh, these motions of pronation and supination. And uh, the winning moves in World Arm Wrestling uh, Championships happen to be the top roll, which is a pronation, and uh, the hook, which is a supination move. So there you go. 
She would have beaten him by about 5%, I figure. So, so she wins that one.